The Rings of Power, Episode 8, Recap. The stranger, who still doesn't have a name, wanders alone until the mystics trick him and tell him he is Sauron, which of course proves to be wrong later. The mini fellowship of Harfoots, including Nori, Poppy, Sadduk, and Marigold, eventually help to free the stranger from the mystics, and the stranger uses magic to destroy them, or send them away, or something. The mystics look like wraiths of some sort. They say the more the stranger uses his powers, the more the veil blocking his memories weakens. Sadduk is injured and and dies. The stranger, having parts of his memory restored, says that he is a wise one or wizard. There are many hints that he is, in fact, Gandalf, even though he was not supposed to have arrived in Middle-earth until the Third Age. But he could also be a blue wizard or someone else. I think the show intentionally left his identity vague to try and rope in more casual Lord of the Rings fans. The stranger says that he must set out to a land far to the east called Rune. Nori joins him after a sad farewell with her family and with Poppy, who appears to be taking Sadduk's place as the new leader of the Harfoots. Galadriel and Halbrand arrive in Eregion, where the dwarves and elves built the Great Forge. Celebrimbor and Elrond are still trying to figure out a way to use the Mithril to save the elves' light from failing. Halbrand gives Celebrimbor some ideas about how to combine the Mithril with other metals to amplify its unique qualities. Celebrimbor is intrigued, and Halbrand says, Call it a gift. For a time in the lore, Sauron called himself Anatar, which means the Lord of the Gifts. In a very quick sequence in Numenor, we see Farazhan watching over the dying king, Tar Palantir. Farazhan commands that a tomb be built to grant Tar Palantir immortality in stone. Many artists are given an hour with the king to come up with their design for his statue. During her session with the king, Aearion, Elendil's daughter, overhears Tar Palantir, who thinks that she is his daughter Muriel. He says, I know what you have been doing in the dark of night when you thought all eyes were asleep. Do you think Muriel has been sneaking a peek into the Palantir, or does she just dance like nobody's watching? He also tells her that if the old ways of their people are not restored, meaning faithfulness to the elves, their island will fall. He opens his secret passage, where Aearion reveals the Palantir, but then we don't know if she touches it or not. I'm sure this will be an important storyline for Season 2. In a sweet moment between Elendil and Muriel, they both agree to be faithful to the elves, trusting that in the end it will be worth it, despite the cost. They return to Numenor to find black banners, indicating that the king is dead. Harazon does not look happy. Back in Eregion, Celebrimbor wishes to forge something great, like his ancestor Feanor, who forged the great Silmarils. Halbrand continues to influence Celebrimbor, but the king, Gil-galad, is not convinced that they'll be able to save the elves. Celebrimbor, Elrond, and Galadriel tell the king that a single object of great power must be forged, something small that can be held, and preferably circular, like a crown, so that the light can, quote, arc back on itself in one unbroken round, building to a power that is all but unbounded. Gil-galad wisely thinks this is a bad idea, and that this much power should not be entrusted to one person, even himself. Celebrimbor says the Southlander Halbrand's suggestions were the key that unlocked the dam. Does this remind you of the key that literally unlocked the dam and created Mordor? Celebrimbor continues, We are on the cusp of crafting a new kind of power, not of strength, but of spirit. Not of the flesh, but over flesh. This is a power of the unseen world. This is very close to what Adar said about Sauron's ambition. At this moment, Galadriel begins to suspect that perhaps Halbrand is more than he seems. Elrond convinces the king to give them a little more time by quoting Gil-galad's words back at him, saying, Hope is never mere, not even when it is meager. Or have you forgotten your own counsel? Galadriel confirms her suspicions about Halbrand. The last king of the Southlands died a thousand years ago with no descendants. Halbrand tells her he really did get the symbol off a dead man. He also tells her that it is too much power for one object, and that they'll be making two smaller objects. Galadriel presses him further, asking who he is. He says, I have been awake since before the breaking of the first silence. In that time, I have had many names. He somehow forces Galadriel into a sort of vision, akin to the vision that Galadriel shows to Frodo in The Return of the King. In her vision, she talks with Sauron, who appears like her dead brother Finrod, and later with Halbrand, on the raft where they first met adrift in the ocean. Halbrand attempts to convince her that he is penitent and really does want what is best for Middle-earth, and he sort of proposes to Galadriel, showing her that at his side the two of them can heal and rule Middle-earth. He even sort of suggests that she will balance him out and keep him on the side of the light. The implication is that without her, he will go full evil. Because of the implication. Oh, uh, okay. You had me go in there for the first part. The second half kind of threw me. Well, dude, dude, th think about it. She's out in the middle of nowhere with some dude she barely knows. You know, she looks around her. What does she see? Nothing but open ocean. Ah, uh, there's nowhere for me to run. What am I going to do? Say no? 
Okay. That, <laughs> <laughs> that seems really dark. No, no, it's not dark. You're misunderstanding me, bro. Galadriel doesn't give in to the temptation, and they have a weird old couple yelling match where Halbrand's eyes change briefly to look like the slitted eye of Sauron. Galadriel nearly drowns before Elrond pulls her from the water back in Eregion. For a moment I thought perhaps Galadriel was taken away, and that this was actually Sauron, who was a known shapeshifter, pretending to be her. Why didn't she tell Celebrimbor and Elrond about Halbrand's true identity? Instead she moves forward with the forging of the rings, saying they must make three rings, because one will always corrupt, two will divide, but with three there is balance. Celebrimbor says he needs gold and silver from Valinor, and so Galadriel symbolically lets go of her brother's death by turning over his dagger to have it melted down and combined with the Mithril to forge the three elven rings of power. As the Mithril drops into the molten metal, it briefly looks like the Eye of Sauron. Then we get this really cool forging montage. The three gems that Celebrimbor had are placed onto the rings. Elrond finds the evidence that Halbrand is not who he says he is, but he decides to trust Galadriel. This makes me even more suspicious that perhaps this is not really Galadriel. We don't yet see who will wear the rings, but I'm pretty sure this will be a major part of the next season. Finally, we transition to Halbrand's eye and we see him entering Mordor. I added this text to make fun of the on-screen text transition from the previous moment in the show when Mordor is revealed. This is not what happened in the show, but just in case it wasn't totally clear, Halbrand is indeed Sauron. But is Galadriel possibly Sauron? The fact that they show this scene makes me doubt my own suspicions, but I'm curious what you think. And that's it. What did you think of the first season of The Rings of Power? I actually really liked it, but I also understand why it's divisive, especially amongst book fans. I'd probably rate it a solid 8 or 8.5 out of 10. I hope that these episode recaps were helpful. They helped me to keep track of all the characters and locations throughout the season, so I'm glad I at least made them for me. But now I'll get back to my in-depth Wheel of Time content. Thanks for liking and subscribing, and special thank you to my awesome YouTube and Patreon supporters. Thank you for watching.